Okay, so here is the unit that was in here before. I found this in a, a utility room. And it looks like this was hooked up, but they replaced the water heater uh, years back and took this out. They weren't using it, so they removed it. But I'm assuming that it's all in good working order, that there's no leak, leaks between the plates or anything like that. So hopefully we're in good shape. But what I do need to do is kind of clean this up. I'm gonna take all this off. I'm gonna redo some of this copper. Uh, I'll save a bunch of the fittings and things, but this is kind of a mess. It's not gonna work for what I have. But what they have here is cold water would come in, um, would migrate through the uh, plates, and then it would come out heated on the back side here. But your hot water from your wood boiler would come in here or here. And as far as I understand it, these are basically reversible, um, but you do want the flows to go opposite. So if you have cold water coming in here and migrating here, you'd want your hot water from your boiler coming in on this side and going out that side. That's just what I've, what I've read and heard. We have uh, our wood boiler hookups on this side, and this is that PEX Alpex. It's a PEX aluminum PEX. Um, special fittings you have to check my last video out for that so on this end they actually have a what's called a mixing valve um, i am not going to use this right now uh, they didn't have any locally i'm gonna have to order one um, and i think i'm gonna try to go without if we have 180 degree wood boiler water coming in here and we heat the the water up in the water heater way hotter than normally we would like 140 degrees so this actually sets the temperature in here and you can set it to several different different uh, ranges. I'm not sure this one even works anymore. So looks like the number one position is 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. And so it actually mixes in cold water with your hot water to make the you know, outgoing temperature match this whatever setting it is. So you don't have anything coming through there super hot. I don't have any young kids or elderly or anything like that in this house. And so we can, you know, monitor the, the water level. But if it comes out way too hot where it could burn people bad, then I, I'll, I'll add a new mixing valve back in. So today I'm going to just redo some of these fittings. Um, I'm going get, to uh, get these all off and put some new copper in here and we'll remove all the rest of the stuff. We'll hook this back up, put it above our water heater, and I'll show you how to do all that. So I did a video many years ago on uh, how to solder, and it's a, a trade or a skill that is uh, not often used anymore because of PEX. Everybody wants to just do everything with, with PEX, and I don't mind PEX, I think PEX has its place. I'm going to be using some PEX here today because there's uh, already PEX in this in a couple areas. But I personally don't uh, don't use PEX on uh, home plumbing projects for fresh water supplies unless it's a you know unique circumstances I guess crawl spaces or somewhere hard to get to or some annoying situation where I'm short on time I need to do a quick repair I would much rather have a a solid permanent healthy <laughs> type connection. Uh, that's just my opinion. And I don't think we've seen the effects that, that PEX will have over the years on, on houses. You know, in 20 years, we're going to be looking back at all these houses with plastic piping everywhere and having leaks and walls and other things. So I personally, I will do copper when I can. So I've got these sanded. I put a little bit of this uh, solder paste or flux in here set it right in here. I'm going to solder it on there first, then I'll take this uh, fitting off. We'll uh, thread tape it and put it back on there and I'll just tighten it up until it turns uh, straight up to 12 o'clock. Well, this is my, my first solder joint in a, in a year or two. <laughs> so it's a little sloppy, but the idea is you heat up the fitting. Uh, the fitting gets hot and you want to heat it up down, you know, at least this far. 
And when you apply the solder, of course, it's going to conduct through this piece and, and everything's going to get hot. And you just keep touching it, usually on the opposite side. So if your flame's on this side, you'll touch it with solder on this side until you start to melt. Once your solder starts to melt, you can turn your flame off and then you can run your, your solder around. And it actually pulls it down in between the, the pipe and the uh, fitting here. Um, it pulls it in that little gap and it kind of melds all around because it's hot and that's when it bonds to this and that. And it makes a permanent, it's a it's a weld really, it's a solder, but um, you can see I uh, got it a little too hot and applied too much solder and so it actually dripped down through the fitting and actually into my into my heat exchanger. So we tapped that out. But So this should be a good uh, leak proof uh, joint and we'll test this of course and if it doesn't leak today, there's a good chance that 50 years from now, it's still not going to leak. So when you're applying the thread sealant tape, you want to make sure that you apply it the opposite way that it's going to spin on. So if I apply it this way, right, my end is going to be right here. Now what happens when I go to spin this in the pipe is this, this edge is going to catch and it's going to actually unthread the tape. It's going to peel the tape right off of my, uh, of my, my threads, right? So you can see that starting to happen right there. It actually peels it back. So that's the wrong way. So you actually want to spin your tape. So if you're holding your fitting in your left hand and you want to spin your tape away from you. So this way, nice and tight, nice and flat. Now when you spin that on there, it goes with the tape and it won't peel it off. All right, now we just need to install it above the water heater. So we'll have our cold water coming in on the top and heading into the water heater right here. And from what I've read, you wanna keep this joint um, within five inches of the water heater connection. All right, in this mess of a water heater installation, we need to add this uh, plate exchanger. So here's our cold water intake. There's our shutoff valve. So we actually want to fit that um, plate exchanger right in this area here, about five inches up from this joint. That looks like they used a push to connect fitting here. So I have to make sure I don't overheat this when I solder. We'll come up to about right here. We'll cut this off and I'll have to move this valve uh, up the pipe a little bit. So we'll have to cut that and put a coupler up there. I'll cut a piece out. And then I have a second project here. Um, so this, I don't really know exactly how all this was originally set up, so we'll kind of figure this out, but it looks like the water flowed in from the boiler and through this filter, um, some kind of a sediment filter just to make sure there was no junk in there. And then it flows straight through here and then into our uh, heat exchanger, which will go right in this area, out this pipe right here and then it goes over to our furnace and then comes back from the furnace right here and then goes back out to the boiler to get reheated. But then there's this little little uh, offshoot here that went to a valve that looks like it was at one point soldered into uh, copper piping. Um, and this looks like some kind of a vent. In fact, it's labeled vent. I'm actually disassemble uh, all of this and move it back to over here. And then I'm gonna tie into this this PEX pipe right here, which is just a, a cold water uh, um, pipe. And we'll bring that down and feed it in there so that I can actually have a valve where I can uh, add water to the system if I would like to. So on the way back out to the boiler, I can you know turn that on and it'll force water out and fill the boiler up. That's the, yeah, the plan anyway. It's another handy tool. Instead of having your full handled cutter, have a short handled one gets into these tight spaces really well. So I don't know if you could see uh, what I had to do here, but so this this coupler here, there's two different kinds of couplers you can usually get. One is a pass through or slide through, and one has a stop. Um, this one actually does have a stop in the middle. 
So right halfway through, there's a little dimple on both sides. It's really faint on these couplers um, that I got from Home Depot. But what I ended up having to do is actually use this kind of as a push through. So I had to force it past that, um, that stop and slide it all the way up onto this pipe because these are rigid between this point and this point and there's not a lot of flex between the ceiling here to move this up and get it on a fitting. So I had to slide this coupler all the way up, get the pipes in place, slide the coupler back down. And so that should, that should work okay. Um, I, I felt it, the, the little nub fit right back down halfway between both pipes. So it should be perfectly, perfectly centered in there. So I've got this whole thing in place. So we've got one, two, three, four joints to solder. I'm gonna try to do this kind of all at once, once everything is nice and straight. Once that's all soldered in place, we can uh, turn the water back on and check for leaks. And I'm also gonna check and make sure we don't get any water coming out of the other side of this. That'll tell us that our plate exchanger is bad. And then, well, I'll have to take this all back apart <laughs> and get a new one. So anytime you're hooking a, a potable, a non-potable water system to a, a potable water system, so I'm hooking this boiler water is going to be circulating through here. This not drinkable water. I'm hooking it up to our, you know, cold water uh, system in the house. I want to make sure that no water from the boiler will ever make it back into our our house uh, water system. So uh, that's the the reason for the backflow preventer that they had on here. So I'm going to put that back on. And then on the back side of this, we'll put our PEX fitting and hook up our PEX line. Well, this is what happens when you you try and save a buck. <laughs> Got the water all turned back on and it looks like it is slowly dripping. So there is some kind of a leak in the actual heat exchanger. And I guess that's what I get for trying to reuse old equipment. Maybe that's why they took it out. So I will uh, I will purchase a new one of these, probably a bigger one, uh, just, just because. Looks like they do have them on Amazon and other places, so I'll, I'll end up grabbing a, a new one down the road. But the little drip, it may actually slow down. Um, sometimes the minerals in the water can, can seal up little drips like that. So we'll let it run for a little bit and see what happens. I've still got plenty of time before heating season. One thing that you want to remember is how you're hooking up your wood boiler lines. So uh, like I said at the beginning, we've got our cold water coming in passing through the the plate exchanger and then into the water heater and so we actually want our hot water from our boiler to come here first before the furnace and uh, go uh, in on the bottom and then run in the opposite direction and then from here it's going to go over to our furnace uh, heat exchanger so you always want the hot water from your boiler to come into your plate uh, heat exchanger first before your furnace and then pass through in the opposite direction and then over to your furnace next. So uh, this will not be taking much heat out of the, the line the majority of the time, only when you're you know, running the hot water. So we still have to test for leaks in the actual uh, supply lines here from the wood boiler. So we need to run water through all of that. We've got some custom 3D printed adapters we'll be using to hook a hose up and cycle water through everything. Uh, we've got some work to do in the addition to get things ready and set in there. And we need to figure out which one of our lines is the supply and which one is the return uh, on the outside. They're not, they're not labeled, so we have to figure that out. Uh, so a little bit of work to do. We'll save that for another video. And then we're gonna get our boiler 
delivered and hooked up here very, very soon. So it's unfortunate that we have a leak in that uh, plate heat exchanger, but uh, that's what you get for using old equipment. So it was untested and uh, no way to know until we get it pressurized. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Let me know what you guys think of the project so far. Are you guys excited? Follow along and uh, see this boiler get installed. I know I'm excited to get it uh, hooked up and working, and I can't wait to eat the house with wood again uh, 100%. Let me know what you guys think. Comments down below, and as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.